call to order the regular meeting of the town of Florence Planning and Zoning Commission. Today is Thursday, May 7th, and we'll call at 6 o'clock. Mr. Olgin, would you take the roll? Yes, sir. Chair Pranzo? Present. Vice Chair Patrick? Present. Commissioner Petty? Present. Commissioner Garcia? Present. Commissioner Fenstermaker? Present. We have a quorum. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Aye. Aye. Item four, discussion, approval, disapproval of the minutes of the regular meeting conducted on April 2nd, 2015. Do we have any comments? Good. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the meet the minutes of the regular meeting conducted on April 2nd, 2015. And I second. Who seconds? Bruce. I have a motion from Commissioner Petty and a second from Commissioner Fenstermaker right. to approve the minutes of the regular meeting conducted on April 2nd, 2015. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The minutes are approved. New business. Taco Bell design review case PZ 1520DR. This is for approval or disapproval of the design review application for the proposed Taco Bell res restaurant. Mr. Olgin, do you have a presentation? Chair Vice Chair, yes I do. Good evening. Tonight I'm gonna cover the design review application for the proposed Taco Bell restaurant. In front of you we have a map that shows you the location of the three parcels that are, um, would, would be home to the, uh, the restaurant. The one in front um, is Pinal Parkway, also known as Highway 79. And I'll use the little marker here so you can see on your screen. Thank you. um, to the south of the property, or the three parcels, is 3rd Street. Um, to the back or the side of the property is North, North Street, and on this side is um, residential. So just covering some project data for use. This information is also in your packet. but. Um, gross acreage is uh, 0 0.0 um, acres. Um, the use before was a commercial retail and professional office. Um, what they're proposing is a restaurant with a drive through. Um, the zoning currently is Highway Business Commercial B2. Uh, the third lot currently is not. Um, it's pending um, town council approval, and that'll be in another week. Um, the building area for the proposed restaurant is 2,456 square feet. Building height, it won't exceed 23 feet. Uh, parking that's required is at least 42 spaces. They're going to give us 46, two of them being um, ADA accessible. And then uh, you'll note the uh, required and provided um, setbacks for the building. Now, I want to cover briefly the access to the site. Um, we're fortunate that uh, one of the lots, which is this property here, that's one of the three lots, has an existing curb cut, so they're going to utilize that, that curb cut. Um, I think it's going to be about, I believe it's 30, 30 feet will be the curb cut, and there's going to be two of them. One is going to be on 79, uh, Pinal Parkway and also the other one on 3rd Street. Um, the first one, which is on 79, is on town, I'm sorry, is on ADOT right away, so they'll need permits and permission from them. Um, as far as uh, town right away, it'll be on 3rd Street, and as I mentioned before, it's in this location here. Now, 
the parking is per is per code. Um, also with the um, ADA um, compliant spots. What's kind of nice is uh, we we did ask them to add some more items to the uh, to the restaurant um, when it's built. And one of the items that we asked them for was a crosswalk to exist here to protect um, patrons. Uh, we also asked them for some simple things like um, bike rack, um, uh, dress up the site with more landscaping. They were very um, generous and able to do that for us. The property um, will have some drainage on the site. Um, it'll be on the north side all along here. Um, that'll be the majority of the, uh, of the required um, retention that's needed for the site. The other item that we asked them for that they were real generous with was landscaping. Um, and there's several components to this. They put landscaping around the entire site, which is required. But uh, the first the submittal, um, we asked them to increase it for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, this side here, as you see on your screen, um, it's going to have the drive-through. And we asked them to screen the drive-through as much as possible, and they were OK with that. Uh, another item that they added to it that uh, was actually um, uh, my director's idea was to add a three-foot screen wall, which helps break up the site real, real nicely, gives it a nice uh, extra feature that um, wasn't going to be there. And that's along uh, Third Street. Um, there's also landscaping along the back side. Now, this, uh, at first, we thought would pose a problem. There's utility lines that exist. They were more than happy to provide um, trees that, are, that don't grow very fast or slow. And those are going to be right along where the utility lines are going to be at. Um, and they also, um, were, we asked them to straddle um, um, the, the retention, not to put the trees in the basin but on top. And they were OK with that. And we also asked them to ask uh, fractured granite, which uh, these are all extra costs. And they had no issues of providing that. They even added an extra landscaping. Um, outlet here, which uh, helps break up the site. That's a lot of blacktop. Um, so they were uh, more than uh, giving to, uh, to the site to make the restaurant look really good. Um, elevations. Uh, this is the more modern um, design that you see here in front of you. It's, um, it's a nationally recognized um, design that they're using. Um, there's not a whole lot of them out there. But I did add a, an image of it uh, to kind of give you some ideas. This is not exactly what it's going to look like. It's pretty close. Um, I think the one that we're looking at has a purple uh, stripe on top in addition to this. And they have some, uh, some uh, window coverings that provide shade in addition to what you see here. But it's uh, quite modern um, as far as the signage goes um, and, and the colors. Well, the colors uh, provide breakup of the long walls. And that helps them not make it look the same. Um, and it, if they paint it all the same, it can create an ice or This doesn't. This gives you a really nice look. And they even have a, a, f a facade brick uh, component that's on this side. Once again, all these are added to just kind of uh, help break it up, make it look modern. Um, the windows in front of the restaurant, pretty common with, the, with, this, with this type of restaurant. But the signage, as, as you saw, it's um, going to include um, the actual name, um, Taco Bell, this little uh, white line that's on top, and also their signature um, bell that you see. Um, it's, a, it's a logo of theirs. Uh, they're also asking to provide a uh, monument sign. Um, this is kind of cool because it's, it's, it's going to also have the brick facade that had already exists um, on the site. But this is here in the middle is going to be a CMU message board. It'll allow them to uh, advertise um, different products, uh, the restaurants, um, uh, specials that they're going to have. Uh, the top is standard. That's a form of a cabinet type lettering that you see pretty common. Um, they're using modern, uh, I believe, LED lighting, which is more uh, energy efficient. Uh, but this is also um, part of their signage. Uh, they didn't go over the what was allowed, and everything was per the code. Um, and the last thing I'd like to cover is um, we, uh, working with them, we were able to get fire involved and also public works department. And they complied with all of their questions and any issues that they had. Um, we did add a total of, I believe it was a total of 15 conditions. Um, now, most of those conditions are what we call boilerplate. They're pretty typical. Um, actually, it's actually 14, 15 being with the one that you add tonight if, you, if the commissioners have anything they want to add to it. So it could be as many as 15. But most of these conditions are pretty standard. Um, and we also reiterated. Uh, some landscaping items that we talked about already. Um, but 
but it's nothing out of the ordinary. Staff um, has recommended approval of this design review. Um, the ownership is here tonight. Um, the applicant, Greg Hitchens, um, with the Hitchens Associates, is also here tonight. If you have any specific questions for him regarding the exterior of, of the of the uh, business, I also wanted to mention before I uh, forget that um, this design review application, um, if you're so inclined to approve it, um, is contingent on Town Council's. Um, zoning approval, which is May 18th. So just wanted to make that note. Do you have any questions for staff? At this time, open it up to the commission. That's a 30-foot 30, 30 entrance on, on both sides on the driveways? Yes, sir. Okay. Otherwise, it's a, a beautiful design. Well done, staff and owner. It's, um, it's very similar to the one in front of uh, uh, Walmart there because that, that yes one is and no. only, that's only two years old I think the design's different now if yeah. you look at the one at Walmart um, I, I did drive by that one to, to see um, they have more of an art artistic drawing if you will uh, yeah. prints that are on the front of it not the brown metal casing that you see here um, so it's a little bit different um, and that's why I had mentioned that this is a little newer design than what they did sure. in uh, Johnson Ranch any other comments Please. Um, I just, I believe I know the answer, but I just wanted to make sure, sure. that this is just Taco Bell and not a hybrid <laughs> restaurant. Um, Chair, Vice Chair Commission, I'm going to let the, uh, the applicant answer that um, on the record. Or the owner doesn't know. Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening, uh, Chairman, members of the Commission. I'm Greg Hitchens with Hitchens Associates Architects in Mesa, Arizona. 2857 North Norfolk's my address. Um, invariably, that question comes up. In fact, it came up Monday night with council. They're, they went a little further. They even went as far as to identify a potential second user, which was KFC. And we unfortunately had to tell them that this is a standalone Taco Bell. And years ago, and I've done several, um, I've actually done a Taco Bell, a KFC, and a Pizza Hut all in one building. But the brand is now pretty much standalone. We haven't done a co-branded store in, in quite a while and their focus is just developing new Taco Bells. Um, so to answer your question, no. They're, all that you'll be getting here is what's on Taco Bell's menu. Thank you. Sure. And then I have, I have a question uh, also. It's our usual question. Um, there are 15 stipulations here that I wanted to make sure that you've read them, you understand them, and you agree with them? Yes, yes, and yes. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Hitchens, I have a question for you. Certainly. I, uh, I see the owner permission forms, and I know that you're representing the owners, but I'm curious, who is going to own and operate the franchise? Well, uh, let me answer that by stating that he's with me this evening. His name is Skip Chase. He owns the Taco Bell that you mentioned in front of the Walmart, as well as, I believe, 10 or thereabouts. Um, and I'm sure he'd be happy to step forward and, and speak to any of your questions or concerns related to ownership. Um, well, you can thank him for that invitation. <laughs> he will. <laughs> Good evening and thank you. My name is Skip Chase. Um, thank you for giving me the time to talk. I've been a franchise with Taco Bell since 1993 and I've got Taco Bell's, I do have the one in Santan Valley. That's the one that's, they're bright orange and they're called the Bold Choice. And this one is called the Live Moss. They came up with it about two years ago. It's the, it's not the newest one out. There's a prototype out that that I didn't feel would be, I'd be comfortable putting out here because they're still developing and have issues with it. This one, um, I think there's two of them in the state so far. And I have um, 11 Taco Bells currently. Most of them are in Mesa. I do have Santan Valley. I have Queen Creek, which is a Long John Silver's. And I have a Long John Silver's at my store up at Baseline Ellsworth, and I have two Pizza Huts. Pizza Hut works well, Long John Silver's, I probably couldn't get out of them fast enough if I wanted to. <laughs> the brands change and they've had some issues that um, I have a problem with. 
<clears throat> excuse me, but as far as Taco Bell, very, very good company. They're great to work with. Um, I like to be involved in my communities. I've been out in Apache Junction. We've, I think we had 160,000 in donations to the Boys and Girls Club in Apache Junction wow. since 1997. So I, I, I do like to get involved in my communities. I live in Chandler. I've got a 50s diner in Chandler as well. Um, but it's, I think you'll be happy having us in the community. I mean, we just uh, get involved. We take very good care of our people. Very good. I stress that. And um, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to be out in this town. I think it's going to be a good fit. I've looked at how many different locations, and I'm, I'm ecstatic that this one's fallen into play because the two previous I had under contract, I think this is actually going to work better than they did. So. Well, what I was concerned with was where were we getting an experienced franchise operator? Yeah. You obviously have a little bit of experience. Yes. A little bit. I, that doesn't mean I'm always great, but um, we try and we address our situations, you know. It's, well, um, I welcome you to the community, yes. and I wish yes. you all the success. I, I like it out here. Um, the fudge shop loves me. Every time I come out here, I think I buy about four or five pounds of fudge and take it back to my restaurant. So. <laughs> The, the girls in here have gotten to know me well, and it's a great little shop. And um, I shop my competitors. Keep it. Um, you've got a very good subway in town. They operate very well. But I look forward to it. Yes, sir. I'd like to compliment you on your staff at the store at, um, at Walmart. Um, okay. My wife and I go in there occasionally, and the staff is always pleasant. They're always uh, you know, careful. They, you know, we're a little slower than the average guy, guy these days, uh, and they're very patient. Um, but they're all nice kids, and I think you've done a great job in in uh, putting the staff in there. And I hope you do the same here. Thank you. She, um, the girl that runs that store, started working for me when she was 16. I believe she's 27 now, and she just moved up from an hourly employee to where she is now, and she does a great job for us. Good for you. Good but for the, you. Um, I appreciate that compliment. I'll, I'll forward it to her. Thank you. Thank any you other, for your time. Any other comments? Mr. Chase, I wanted to ask a clarifying question. You said this, when you said there, there are two live moths in, in Arizona, is that what you said? Yes. What, what are you referring to? Are you referring to the architectural style or are you in, to the interior? Or what, what does that mean? Yes. What, do, what, do this, we get, what do we get that special and different from all okay. the other Taco Bells? This is a Live Moss building. It's the newest building that comes out. When, we, when Taco Bell builds, um, I get a 25-year commitment on a building, and we have to remodel them at a certain point. And I'll give you an example. I like to take care of my assets. I have a store in Apache Junction, and I was required to remodel it at 10 years, or 20 years in, and I remodeled it fully at 10 years to get the newest one, the bold choice. That was just in 2011, and already it's an outdated asset. This is the newest asset. It's called the Live Moss model and they make like three different sizes of it, and we're putting in the largest one they make here. So. Are we referring to different lighting? Because the reason I'm asking, they put like sure. a, uh, the latest and greatest McDonald's in a town that I used to live in, and I was really blown away with what they had done. They had like sustainable lighting, and they made things out of yes. recycled materials. It was really cool to see what they had done that was considered um, you know, the latest technology. Yeah, they've, I don't want to bore you with the details in the kitchen, but they've, it's amazing how long, they, how far they've come with, it, as far as the uh, usage of energy and equipment in the kitchen. Um, same thing in the dining room. My store, to give you an example, and I, I guess it's the best way to put it, I'm pretty simple, so I'm going to put it as simple as I, I, I know how to put it. My store in Santan Valley is 2,400 square feet. It was built in 2013, I think it was August of 2000, I think it's just three years old. That store, my utility bills on a balanced budget run about $2,400. Same size store I have at Power and McKellops is within like 40 feet. I run about 3,400. So it's about, it's about $800 difference every month just in utility costs, just with the upgrades that they've made. And in those few years, how much they've, I was in a meeting, um, two weeks ago in Washington, D.C., meeting with, um, who's our senator here, Gosar? Senator Gosar. And he was, one of the things he asked me about with this, and the Taco Bell rep brought out the plans and was showing them all the things they're doing to make this a more sustainable 
business because it's something that hasn't been on our reputation for a long time and it's good how long they how far they've brought it. So. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Thank you for your time. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Then may I please have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the design review PZC-15-20 BR um, for the Taco Bell restaurant. Uh, including the conditions that staff brought forward 1 through 14. And I'll second that. So I have a motion by Commissioner Petty to approve Taco Bell Design Review Case PZ 1520, including the stipulations, and seconded by Vice Chair Patrick. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Taco Bell Design Review Case PZ 1520 is approved. Thank Move, you. Moving right along. Sandstone Solar Design Review Case PZ 1521 DR. This is a discussion, approval, disapproval of an amended design review application for the Sandstone Solar Power Generating Facility. Mr. Eckhoff, I believe this one is yours. Chair, I, I think Gilbert's on a roll here, so I'm going to let him continue the, uh, present, the presentation, if that's all right. I'm thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> Chair, Vice Chair, Commission, good evening. Um, so here we go again, uh, Sandstone Solar Design Review Application. I'm going to cover the, uh, the, the major parts that were amended. Um, I want to just keep in mind that this, this package came to you about two, two and a half years ago, um, and it was approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, they are back, the um, S Power is back, they've had some changes, um, they've added some property, um, they had added an additional 40 acres to it, uh, they made some modifications to the walls, the fencing requirements, and also the vegetation plan. Uh, wanted to show you this map and also wanted to point out uh, we show in your packets um, this area in red, but it does veer out. Um, that was incorrect. That was incorrect. Uh, it actually goes straight down. So the map that I provided with you, um, it was an error. I apologize. But the, this one in front of you. Thank, thank you. That ends a little confusion there. Um, the property that was added to this uh, project was here. This is the 40 acres. I um, wanted to cover its location. It's in an existing entitled um, resi residential development, a PUD called Monterra. This one, uh, I believe it's uh, called Monterra East. Um, it's south of Hunt Highway. Yes, yeah, south of Hunt Highway. Um, and also, I believe it's, uh, it's going to be about, like I said, 337 acres. And it's, a, it's proposed to... Uh, for 45 megawatts um, alternating current solar generating facility. Um, currently, the properties around it include vacant desert, agricultural land, future residential, sand and gravel operations. Um, the power generated by this project will uh, be inter inter interconnected to SRP's existing transmission network. Um, now, as I said before, we have the applicant here tonight to cover all uh, the major details, but this. Um, what it will take um, solar facility, uh, the objectives here are to um, utilize undisturbed land um, or land that has a use but won't be used until you know, several years from now, um, using existing electrical um, distribution facilities, right-of-ways, roads, uh, minimizing impacts uh, to, to threaten or endangered species, um, min minimizing water usage, uh, which is almost nothing in this case, and also reducing um, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, this project uh, has several phases, but it's supposed to be around for at least 35 years. Now, as I mentioned before, when they came to us, um, we had to amend the, the, the PUD zoning to accommodate this use. Um, so it is owned correctly, um, which is a PVSF district. And that's where um, this is going to be uh, taking place. This shows you kind of um, what was presented in 2012 and what we have today. 
Um, they kind of pointed out the areas of the fencing. Um, originally, there was a lot more um, brick fencing involved, but uh, speaking with them, we've agreed that um, they're going to place uh, actually a real nice uh, split face wall that's going to be on the north side of the property. It's also going to go down here on the, um, I believe this is the, Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. This is the north side. They got it backwards. This is the north side, which is going to have the um, the, the split face wall, and also um, on this side here, which is the west side. And they are also proposing to put chain link fencing along the rest of the property, um, due to the fact that you can't really see it. I mean, you can barely see some of what's on this side. But um, staff worked out the details on this. Um, Access to the site is going to be off of Hunt Highway via private road easement along the Felix Road alignment um, and the Ranch View Road. Um, and currently they have a 66 foot right of way um, easement. Um, I also wanted to mention that within the site, they're proposing to bring in uh, several all weather access um, roads to accommodate uh, emergency services. Um, originally, um, I believe that wasn't, uh, at least as much as we're asking them to, wasn't uh, even a focus, but now it is. Um, makes it a little more accessible for uh, the emergency services that are on the site. There's going to be a um, substation up in this corner here. SRP, correct, Mark? Yes. Up in this corner of the project. Now, along with the, uh, the wall, being on this property where we have on the north side, they've also proposed to add some landscaping um, to kind of help it blend with the existing area. Um, we do also have letters from uh, property owners around this property that uh, support what we're doing, support the chain link on the sides that they're on. On this property, as been talked in the past, it does have an emergency um, access. It's on the southwest portion of the property near Montero South Parcels. Um, access to the subject site um, is provided through a 33-foot 33, 33 road easement uh, along Palmer Road and existing uh, access easements. On each of the, uh, on the, the emergency access point, it's going to be gated um, with a notch lock so the fire department can get in there or any other emergency services that need to get in there. Uh, pretty common for this type of development. Um, the other access point, which is uh, off of Hunt Highway, is, uh, as I said before, it'll be paved. Um, it'll, it'll be the main entry point to this project. Currently, they have no um, uh, O&M building, which is operation and maintenance building. Um, they've talked about possibly bringing one later, which will have to go in front of the commission for approval. But as of uh, as of today, they don't have any. Uh, uh, they don't need it right now. Um, water and sewer. Um, this facility doesn't um, isn't going to need water. They they will have to um, provide some temporary water for. Uh, the plants that are going to be on the north side of the property. But the type of plants that we're suggesting, um, they do really well. They're oleanders, creosote. Um, it won't take long for them to be established and uh, ultimately be on their own without water. And they'll blend into the environment. Um, this area is already covered in all kinds of vegetation. They had proposed some uh, site lighting. They're going to have some, uh, possibly some tent parking on the site. But any lighting that's going to be um, used on the site is going to be per the dark sky ordinance, um, it'll be down. It won't be um, facing out to any potential uh, future residential uh, neighborhoods that could, could come along. Um, I won't get into the details about the photovoltaic modules, applicants here, if you wish to ask them questions on that. Once again, um, staff, these, these guys also were great to work with. Um, they sat down with Public Works fire department and ourselves, and they addressed any questions we had, any concerns. Um, they were willing to, uh, to, to work with us to make sure that the town was happy with the end product. Um, I wanted to also show you an image of the um, entry monument sign right here. Um, they were going to provide this at the entry point of the, uh, of the actual um, off of Hunt Highway, uh, the entrance to the uh, subdivision, and it'll, it'll say uh, sandstone solar. Um, this area will be heavily um, landscaped a little more than the rest of the areas just because it's their entry point. Uh, the public might see a portion of this as they're going by. But as mentioned before, they're using great uh, types of, 
um, desert plants to that will be around in several years. Um, the wall that they're proposing is a split face. Um, it's a little more costly for them, but it, 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 it's great for uh, graffiti issues. Um, it holds it really well in this type of environment. Um, and it has a nice texture to it that gives it a, it looks really well, it'll blend into the area. Uh, they have proposed some security measures that you won't be able to see. Um, I believe it'll be with inside the, uh, the fencing. On the, um, on the far side, this is a picture of the chain link fence that's being proposed on the other half of the project. Pretty standard. I believe both of these won't exceed six feet in height. So um, pretty standard. Um, we're just happy they, won't, they didn't want to put any serpentine wire across the chain link. We don't want people to be confused with the prison facility. Um, sorry, bad joke. The staff does recommend approval of this project. Uh, there, are, there are conditions. Um, I believe there's seven conditions, eight being the one that the commission would add. If you have any questions regarding what type of material or what type of um, solar products being placed in there, um, the applicant's here to answer that. Any questions regarding the rest of the site, I'd be happy to answer it. Um, any questions for staff? Open it up to the commission. What's the uh, total output of this solar farm? 45 megawatts. 45 megawatts. Thank you. I was wondering on the um, the entrance on the north side there, it shows as 26 feet mm -hmm. on a whip, and the taco bill is 30 feet. Um, I'm concerned that you're going to have a, uh, since Hunt Highway is so narrow, uh, you're going to have to have the semi go into oncoming traffic in order to make that swing in through the gate or in through that entrance. You have a, a shoulder that runs east and west but then the 26 foot on the entrance, is that going to be the, the end all on, on even on a construction entrance? Or, or can we take it off of the, come off of Attaway also? Uh, Chair, Vice Chair, Commission, um, Mr. Fenster Maker, I didn't um, mention it, but in the report it does talk about uh, um, deceleration and deceleration lanes um, that if deemed needed by the uh, our, our, um, public works engineer, they would look at that and consider that. Um, it is a concern. Uh, the reason why this, this is 26 feet and not 30 is because it's not going to be as much traffic as with the restaurant. It's right off of 79. You're going to have a lot, more, a lot more people that are coming um, that need more room to turn into the restaurant. But um, this being such a, it's such a remote area, um, no, really no homes in the area except to the north. But you're going to be within 500 feet of Felix. Are we going to put a, we're going to put a signal at Felix in the the near future. So mm -hmm. you're going to have Felix with the signal, and then if you look at it, it's going to be a straight shot at 500 feet and then come into the entrance. And what I'm concerned again is, is making that turn because during construction, um, you're going to have to have uh, uh, long trailers and stuff coming in or hauling the. I can, I can, ans I can answer that if, if it's all right. Chair, members of the commission, um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, the most traffic that's going to be generated on this site is during the construction. So they are going to be busy out there for several months. They're, they're going to have, um, there's just going to be a, a lot of activity. So they do have to get a right-of-way permit to come off of Hunt Highway, and they have to develop a traffic control plan. With that traffic con control plan, it, it may suggest that they lay some additional asphalt at that intersection to control left and turn moments. It may require at certain points that they have somebody actually monitoring the intersection for ingress and egress if they're bringing in heavy, <coughs> heavy loads, uh, big equipment loads. So they do have to address um, those issues during the construction. So they may, re uh, so the town engineer, upon approval of that, he may require that there be a preemptive warning, that there'll be signs that are in installed and so forth. Um, so once, once the facility is done, uh, the only traffic that occurs is uh, the, the weekly visit or whatever it may be by, by maintenance personnel and occasional um, other visits to change out, to change out equipment. So uh, the, the nice thing about these sites is that once they do get past that point, they really don't gener generate any, any impact. Uh, they're not on water, they're not on sewer, they don't generate a lot of traffic or noise or, or anything. So, but they do have to, um, yeah, that was definitely a big concern of ours is during the construction, we know they're, 
we have experience already dealing with the one up on Bella Vista. That was a 20 megawatt project. And, and so we know how busy the construction phase is, and this is twice as large as that site, so that's going to be real important. Are they going to be utilizing any of the, that uh, southern road at all uh, to bring in anything? I think for the most part, uh, member fence maker and the commission, I think for the most part their access is going to come off of Hunt Highway, and so that is the old Felix alignment that they're, that they're utilizing. Um, the new Felix alignment that will be will be to the to the west of course um, so that's really going to be the primary access they will have the secondary access off of the old uh, Palmer Road alignment which is to the south and that right now is a road that access is the uh, the rinker pit uh, but they would come down that road um, through the agricultural fields and and next to the uh, the pit and then uh, and then access some uh, skid skid canal uh, access ways through the through the site it's really a lot more convenient to come right off of Hunt, so I imagine that for the most part during construction and operation, that's where they'll be coming from. Okay, thank you. Um, please. All right, um, you mentioned that you had received letters of support or in favor for the six foot chain link fence from. Yes. I was wondering if you had received any negative letters. No. Commission Chair, no, I've received no from opposition. Thank you. And, and to the to the east, I'll let you know the one of the thinkings on the fencing was just to the east is Merrill Ranch and it's and it's zone commercial em, employment. And so it's gonna be if the if the plan occurs that way, it's gonna be a similar similar type of use, a commercial industrial employment type of type of use, which you would think would be acceptable there. But on the west we did the masonry wall because to the west is the residential portions of the Montero plan, plan community. To the south, we did the chain link because it abuts um, the, the Rinker Pit and the, and the Gila River. It never really will have a neighbor other than that to, the, to, to that uh, side. To the north, we did the wall because to what extent you can view the site from Hunt Highway, it'll enhance appearance a little bit. And then to the north, it may have some um, commercial uses that, uh, that fill in that notch there along Hunt Highway. Any other questions or comments? I have, a, I have a couple for the applicant, and I suppose they could step up. State your name and address for the record. Yes, my name is Garrett Bean with Sustainable Power Group. My address is uh, 2 Embarcadero Center, San Francisco, 94111, California. Okay, uh, the first question I have. Um, deals with the two different technologies, but you also say or equivalent in your paragraph. Um, I've had some experience with or equivalent, uh, and, and it's not been very good. So um, I, I want to um, I want to make sure that our first stipulation covers that or equivalent. Which stipulation are you talking about? The very first stipulation says that any changes have to be approved by uh, staff, effectively. I don't have that. My first one is different. Uh, what number are you referring to? The construction, as may be amended by conditions of approval. That speaks to construction, but um, if there are changes down the road, is that also, is that included in that first stipulation or do we need to add another stipulation that those, those uh, changes have to be approved? Well, Chair, members of, of the Commission, the, with the design review, you're looking at the broad perspective of the project that they're going to do. Um, the, the details of the construction will go in, into more of the, the civil plans and the construction and the engineering plans. Um, was, was there something in particular in regard to the site that, uh, yeah, quite that we frankly, should address? Quite frankly, I hate the term or equivalent because it's, it's kind of it's, it's meaningless um, in terms of 
of an equivalent? Uh, by whose standard is it equivalent? Uh, who's going to decide if it's equivalent? Um, I don't know what kinds of things that we could get into here, but um, I've had some experience with or equivalents that uh, that, that placed uh, uh, a, a very uh, it put us in a very dangerous position because the person that made the or equivalent decision did not have the tech technical background to make that decision, and it was done solely on the basis of a, a cheaper part. And um, uh, and so well, I, I, I'm just looking at down the road. I, I, under, I understand, and uh, and in fact, actually uh, today. We, we have receipt of the construction drawings already, so uh, we're not expecting to be making um, any changes down the road. Um, if we do, it, um, it's going to be something that's carefully, carefully reviewed to make sure that it complies with all building, fire codes, engineering codes, et cetera. Um, but I think the, at this stage, the plan is really is pretty well set because they are on a uh, red hot timeline to have this facility con constructed, and there really won't be a lot of time to be making those uh, those types of modifications. Okay. Well, this, yeah. this has application subsequent to this because if this is going to be a 36 year operation, um, typically photovoltaic cells don't last more than about 12 years. So we're looking at three different changes uh, for this farm to operate in that period of time. And so, so what I'm thinking is I expect, I expect <clears throat> that any changes would, would have the latest technology and improvements and all of that stuff. But I think we should. I think we should have a say in in what goes in. It should be approved by and, staff. And, and, absolutely, and chair, chair, members of the of the commission. Absolutely, if they're uh, routine maintenance, we we wouldn't have any involvement in. Uh, but if they get to a point in five, ten years where they're going to completely uh, change the technology. Um, absolutely. Um, this is complicated stuff, so we would have all kinds of people involved in that decision, and it would have to go through our department to get okay. to get approved. Okay. That, design, that, that, excuse me. Let me interrupt for just a moment. I think we've made a left turn. When I read this condition, I believe it to mean when they use the word facility, it might mean later on the operation and maintenance building. It might mean a change in the fence. It might mean a change in the road. But these gentlemen are looking at return on investment. And as technology progresses, right. I don't believe that we should be inside the paint factory telling them how to make the paint. Right. It's okay as far as what the facility has in terms of impact on our community but getting inside their business and regulating their return on investment, I believe, is outside the statement. Right, and so, and, and Chair, members of the Commission, so our, our role doing the design review is to look at the big picture and the, and the layout of the site and the use on the property, the, the wall, the landscape in general, it's a solar photovoltaic facility. Then when we get into the permitting side, it's a matter of Life, life safety issues and what requires a permit, what doesn't require a permit. So uh, how they operate their facility and how they generally maintain that, we, we would, we're not going to have any say in that. If down the road they do substantial changes that codes require us to see it, then, then they obviously would know that because uh, they're in this business, they know exactly uh, what, what they're doing and they would bring those changes to us and we would, and we would review them and, and permit them. So yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying the, the, the wording here leaves it kind of open. I, so I, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. So okay. um, the, the other question I have is about the routine maintenance. Are you going to have routine maintenance for cleaning uh, these things? Because I know when they get dusty, they, the efficiency drops. And, um, and so are, and, and in the process of cleaning, do you use water? Yes, we do. We, so we normally clean the panels about one to two times a year. Um, with all, our, all of our operating facilities, we're actually averaging around one time a year. Um, so the w water usage during, um, during the actual operations and maintenance is extremely minimal. Um, even for a facility like this, we're seeing much lower numbers 
uh, than we initially forecasted a long time ago when you were seeing the project in 2013 or 2012. So we're looking at you know just a couple acre feet to really clean the panels. Yeah. No, I'm all I'm all for um, solar. Uh, it's the, it's the only thing to do here, and um, it's um, it's essentially uh, cheap energy, and um, uh, so I think solar farms are the way to go, and. Uh, I'm looking forward to this one coming online too. So we'll be we'll be what almost 80. Town of Florence will have about 85 megawatts output total between the farms we have now. Well, chair, members of the commission, yes, we do have the uh, Johnson Utilities as a couple of a couple of facilities, and then we have the 20 megawatt on Bella Vista, yeah. uh, and then we'll add this site, and then actually in the near future, I suspect that you may be hearing about another facility that's in similar similar in size so we're going to have a good amount of uh, solar in the community yeah we have the the county has a, a solar site that we approved too so um, that's north of town and it's it's north of our current solar farm so um, there's lots of lots of solar energy coming online which is a, is a really good thing the one the one thing that I was uh, was looking at was it uh, essentially as technology moves on, you'll still have solar panel. What I think I would not want to see is a big deep space parabolic <laughs> <laughs> facing south. Those are things of the past. And so, it, and, <laughs> that's, and that's essentially as long as it looks good and you, you on your side of the the wall and stuff, and you generate electricity, um, this looks good to me. Yeah, just I, no no big deep space. <laughs> no, no, none of that is planned. I think the town of Florence did a really good job um, with the design review because they're limiting the height, things of that nature, so you stay within this same technology. The reason why we said um, similar or equivalent is because there are different types of panels. Um, we know what we're using right now. They're polycrystalline panels. They're relatively small. The axis is around four and a half. Uh, feet high and they rotate back and forth so it is very low standing and just similar tracking to because systems. Because you can use the one of our, our uh, rock quarries to put in your barrier parabolic <laughs> if you want. That would be a We'll keep that in mind. <laughs> but we'll come back to you if something like okay. that happens. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have any other discussion, comments? I, I have a question and it's probably not relevant to anything but I noticed that the the gas main runs through this property, and you've obviously not wanted to touch it with a 10-foot pole. But like, what, what, what could happen along that line, and how would they get in there to address it? If, for example, I mean, obviously nobody's there, correct? Nobody's posted there. You're mm -hmm. saying you come down to clean it once in a while. I imagine you check on it once a month, but for the most part, it's sitting there by itself, right? So if something happened and they wanted to get in there. They have access to it? Yeah, so we're coordinating with them. We monitor the facility um, daily, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we're always monitoring the facility. Um, the gas company will be provided access to our facility. The reason why we didn't go over the top of it is because they do need an easement in there. If they needed access or make repairs to their lines, um, we'll coordinate with that with them. They do have um, emergency access as well. So. Call 811, right? Yeah. Before you dig. We'll do a little more than that. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Okay. One last one. Please. Yeah, uh, just the, the seven stipulations at the town. You read them. You're good with them? Yes. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Is it seven? I thought I had eight. We're good, boss. But the eight one is just oh, bad. it's baloney. Okay. Good, boss. Don't leave. As you can see, I have trouble hearing. But I thought I heard you mention that the panels were four and a half feet tall. No, so the finished at, elevation at the um, axis where they track off of the racking system that they sit on. They are tracking technology, so they follow the sun. And where that axis is that they track, it's about four and a half feet. It does have to change slightly due to grade um, across the site, but that's generally what it is. I'm visualizing a, a horizontal look at your facility. I got a wall. I'm on the west side. 
I got a block wall. Do I see your panels? No, they'll, they'll be low. So if you actually take a look at your screen, there's a photo of, um, yeah, there you go. Okay. of me standing next to one. So <laughs> I'm not that tall. I'm five foot seven. Yeah, I was going to say, you look taller in the picture. <laughs> oh, I was going to, I try and stretch it lengthwise to make me a little bit bigger. <laughs> okay, that, that's my concern. And the director explained why we don't have chain link or why we have chain link to the east. <clears throat> my concern there is that it's been my experience that zoning can be fickle what might be commercial or light industrial today, maybe housing tomorrow, depending on a developer that comes swinging in the door. I have to think on that for a minute, but I appreciate your investment in Florence, and I look forward to you bringing jobs here. An unmanned plant doesn't sound like it's gonna do a lot. Yeah, I, it's true. Once they are operational, there is a, a limited amount of staff needed for it. Um, we do have the ongoing landscaping, things of that nature. The typical maintenance, just making sure everything is, um, you know, operating efficiently and effectively. So we do send staff out here. Uh, we did uh, just discuss with Mark and uh, Gilbert earlier today, and. Um, some of the other members of the community at the local chamber of commerce about holding a job fair to make sure that some of those local people are being used during this construction period um, to employ some of the locals. I appreciate that. One last comment. I'm 63 years old and I can take a six foot chain link fence in almost a single bound. You might want to think about that. We've, we have used this in other locations and we, we don't, always require barbed wire. I think we worked with the town uh, to eliminate it here because we didn't want it being like a prison, but everything um, inside is safe. Um, the substation uh, has a higher chain link fence around it to protect uh, people from that, but really the current and everything inside and with the panels is all very well contained, so it's a pretty safe facility actually when you get inside. Thank you. I think this also that the, having a solar plant or, um, or multiple solar plants in our town shows that we, we've got the old and, and we're moving toward new technology. And um, uh, a lot of businesses look at, at cities and towns that are trying to be as green as possible. And, and um, I, I'm, I like this idea. And I'm, uh, I think it's fine. I, and by the way, I'm 60 six and I can bring a ladder to that fence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but can you stand it up? <laughs> well, you'll be there on the other side for me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no other comments, questions, may I please have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the design review for case PZC-15-21 DR, the sandstone solar design review. Second. I'd like to amend that motion to add the comment that in the event zoning changes to the east that would bring in residential or like commercial that the fence be the chain link fence be deleted and that a stone wall equivalent to what's on the west side be installed. Chair, members of the commission, if I could, um, that's why we went to Southwest Value. We, we I'm went, sorry. We, we approached Southwest Value Partners. Mm -hmm. um, they have all the land to the east and we approached them about the compatibility of the, of the chain link fence. Um, and they they agreed to do that. So we we had our own reasoning, but then we actually reached out to the property owner and said, "Are you okay with this?" So right now his property is zoned for a compatible land use. I believe actually, uh, since his property is zoned that way, and and they are aware of what's going here and agreeable to it, 
I believe the obligation, if they wanted additional screening, whether it be a wall or landscaping, that would be something that would be addressed when that PUD was amended. Because if they do want to change the, the land use to the east, they would have to come back to the Planning Commission and the, and the Council to have the zoning approved. And at that time, we would tell that subsequent developer, builder, whatever it is, well, here's how you screen it. So uh, I... Let me I, interrupt, Mark. I would just shift. How does my condition have any impact if all of this is true? Um, because I wanted to clarify that the, really the, that the obligation to deal with the development, um, the impacts of whatever development happens to the east would be the, the burden of the folks that develop to the east um, and not for the solar company that's, that's there um, for five or ten years, whatever, to change out, uh, to change out the wall at that time. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to have solar, and I really didn't want to have this discussion, but I'll just keep moving forward. I did a survey of people, and I expected 100% to say, wow, solar, and they didn't. About half of them said, I'd rather have the desert landscape. So that makes me think, landowners leave, they sell property to developers or whatever. They come walking in the door here and asking for zoning changes. You might not be here, Gilbert might not be here, I might not be here. That's a light industrial endeavor. I don't look at them as solar. I look at them as a light industrial endeavor. Mm -hmm. They're here for profit. <coughs> if all of the property owners stay the same, my condition has no impact. If the property owners change, if conditions change, then I want the responsibility on the light industrial, the person who's here making money, to be on them. It's their facility. Do you disagree with that? I, I do think that if the intent is to put a, put a wall there, that it would be it would be easier to just build a wall today than to than to. No, I'm looking at their cost, their startup cost. It's got to be horrendous mm -hmm. to build a block wall all the way around there. It's okay. I'll meet them halfway. If conditions change and they're making money, there's no reason why they can't make the investment. I I think the problem that we have is that we have very fixed and rigid prices throughout the life of the system. We have to estimate these throughout our contract with SRP. So when we go into this, um, we have a, a site, we have a piece of land, we have a project, and we have, you're right, we do have a stream of revenue, but that whole startup cost and everything is factored into that, and that's why we have that. Um, well, what's your return on, what's your projected return on investment? How many years? Um, well, we modeled these things out to 35 years. I'm sorry? We modeled these things out to 35 years. So you're not going to pay for this investment for 35 years? Um, we will be paying for it all the way along, but yeah, at some point we, we do start making our money. But you're right, the, the upfront cost is the very intensive cost. All right, I've met a lot of resistance over this. So I know I'm going to live to regret this, but I'll withdraw that condition. And so we have a motion by Commissioner Petty to approve the amended design review application for sandstone solar power, seconded by, was it Commissioner Garcia? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The design review application for sandstone solar power is approved. Thank you. Moving right along, my favorite part. Call to the public. <laughs> There's no public. Here. Actually, design review is. I don't have public. You know, in the, in the call to the public, uh, Mark Eckhoff, community development director, I, I will note something exciting that. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, I'm yes, sorry. if you speak like that. Okay. Which I'm almost touching the mic, so it's kind of different. I appreciate the hell out of it. <laughs> um, 
if you've noticed in downtown, particularly on Willow, on Willow Street, uh, I think you all heard about the project that we started with the Florence Future Foundation, uh, the town community development and public works department are working on planting trees around town and we've already done uh, quite a number of them on, on Willow Street already. We planted willows on Willow Street. And so if you go down Willow, you'll, you'll, you'll see a lot of these little, these little plants. They were particularly grown, they were grown in, um, in, a, in a way that they are gonna get a deep tap root and be able to, once they're, they get supplemental water for the, maybe the first year or so, but after that, they should be pretty well established. And we're trying to do that around town and also, uh, the uh, foundation is also working with private property owners to, to plant some additional trees around town. So we continue to do exciting stuff in the downtown area to uh, uh, make it more and more attractive. So I, if you have the time to take, take a look, it's pretty neat to see those trees going in. That's the best thing we can do to, um, to combat greenhouse gases because there's not much else we can do. We love trees and we are a tree, tree city USA. We just had our Arbor Day uh, proclamation the other, the other night, so it is important to us. Trees, trees and shrubs. And this solar plant should help, uh, help us on the, on the thing. But yeah, the staff, you did a good Do we job. have any other comments from the public? Then I'll close the call with the public and open up to the commission. Commissioner Garcia? Yeah. Commissioner Fenstermaker? Looks good to me. Vice Chair Patrick? Good. Holy Frey, holy. Thank you for uh, being here and staff for us. Very good work. Then may, I, may I have a, a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. I'll, I'll second. Hold on a second, I'll, I'll do it again. I'll make a motion we adjourn. I'll second it. I have a motion to adjourn by Commissioner Garcia. And somewhere over here, somebody said second. And second by Commissioner Patrick. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? We're adjourned.